welcome to my channel. My name is Morgan and I am a mom to eight kids. I am homeschooling five of them currently. I've been a foster mom for lots and lots of children. I definitely think one of the hardest things of trying to get anything done, homeschool, dinner, cleaning, anything, is keeping toddlers occupied. Giving them activities that don't cost a lot of money and don't make a big mess. I've been thinking about this video for months. I've been trying to figure out what are some of my go-to things that I've done over the years because I feel like as I go through life, like I just do things and I don't actually put a lot of thought into what I've figured out over the years. And so sitting down and trying to make this video was a lot harder than I thought. I am gonna give you, one, two, three, four, five. I am gonna give you 19 things that you can do that are minimal mess and minimal cost or even free. Probably not completely free, but you already have the things in your home so that you can do some of these things. One of the first things that you can do with little ones when you need for them to calm down is read books. I know what you're thinking. You can't cook dinner while you're reading books, but a lot of times when you sit them down to read them books, it sets a tone for calm, quiet play. So you can read them a book or two and then you can get up and go do what you need to do and they'll continue in that same calm, quiet play for a while. Not forever, but it'll give you a little bit of time, especially if when you're reading books, you let them kind of play with their Hot Wheels cars or play Legos or Lincoln Logs or whatever that you do when you're reading. That is one thing that is really amazing. Another thing that you can do is Play-Doh. So I know a lot of moms shy away from Play-Doh because maybe they have carpet, maybe it makes a mess, etc. But it's really not that hard to clean up. It takes just a few seconds. Even if they like crumble it up, you just get a ball of it and you kind of go around and, and clean it all up and it's really fast and it keeps kids occupied. So when I get my toddlers playing with something, I try really, really hard to get them to sit there for a full like 15 minutes at least before changing activities because I could easily change activities four times or more while I'm homeschooling in the morning at the table. My two and four year old, I will definitely bounce them through several of these activities in one day. I only give them like two cookie cutters. A lot of times I give them a spoon and a butter knife and they just go to town creating and making all kinds of crazy things with their Play-Doh. So that is one really great option. You can get tiny little things of Play-Doh at Walmart for 50 cents a piece. I recommend buying at least two. And I only give my kids one color at a time. Otherwise you wind up with a big brown Play-Doh ball, which is totally fine. We've done that many, many times, but that's just the way that I do it. Okay, another thing. So a lot of you guys are gonna say this is really messy and it is messy but it's so easy to clean up and that's kinetic sand now kinetic sand i held off buying for a long time because one bag of it is like 12 dollars and i was like that is crazy i'm not going to pay 12 dollars for sand but i would do it again in a heartbeat i got it for my kids for christmas this year it's march now and it's the most played with thing with my two and four year old hands down my eight year old is the one that actually wanted it and she's probably played with it like maybe a handful of times. Whereas my two year old begs me every day for her kinetic sand. She wants to play with her kinetic sand. It's so cute listening to her ask for it. Anyway, the key to kinetic sand is just make sure the floor under where they're sitting is swept. So I'll let them play at the table while we're doing homeschool. And I just make sure to sweep up the breakfast crumbs. And that way when they're done, I can literally just kind of scoop it all up and it's cleaned up that fast. Um, if the floor beneath them is really crummy, you end up having to throw a lot of the sand away because it gets mixed in with the crumbs. So just only give them kinetic sand if you've had time to sweep before they play. And then it really is a super snap to clean up. Okay, another thing is draw on whiteboards. So Dollar Tree has a bunch of little whiteboards that you can buy all kinds of different types. And just get, Dollar Tree also has dry erase markers. You can just get those. It's something for the kids to do. It's something different. You can hand them the board and you can hand them one marker at a time and that way you don't lose the lids everywhere, but that is a super easy thing to draw on whiteboards. Okay, another thing that um, 
you can do is teach them how to use the kid safe scissors, give them a piece of construction paper and let them cut away. This might not be a good thing for a two year old, but it's definitely a good thing for the four year old. Teach them how to use the scissors and then they love, love, love to cut. It's kind of like letting them be destructive, but in a healthy artistic way. And um, you could even give them a glue stick if you're really brave and let them glue all those pieces that they cut to another piece of paper that's maybe a different color and voila, that keeps them busy for a while and they love it and they think it's so cool. Okay. Another thing that you can do is get some of those little plastic beads and thread them onto a pipe cleaner. So pipe cleaners, they hold their shape and they're just so much easier than say like a piece of that thread. Like even the thick plastic thread is really hard for a two and four year old to thread by themselves, but pipe cleaners, those are super easy. So that is a great, great idea to, as soon as they get old enough to be able to do that, it's a great thing for them to do. Okay, and another thing you can do with that is like, <clears throat> my four year old knows his colors now so I can tell him only thread the red beads on the pipe cleaner today or only thread the yellow beads and it gives him some learning of his colors and stuff like that, so that's another idea. Okay, so this is something that I've never done but I want to do and I was reading about it and it sounds super fun. Definitely does sound messy though, is to get some hot wheel cards and a big cookie sheet and at the Dollar Tree get like a $1 thing of shaving cream. Squirt the shaving cream on the cookie sheet and let the little ones drive their cars through the shaving cream. I don't know if that's gonna get in their eyes or be messy, but it sounded super fun. So if anybody ever has tried that or um, does try it, let me know. Let me know if that's a good idea or not. I haven't tried it yet, but the next time I go to Dollar Tree, I'm gonna be getting that shaving cream and I'm definitely gonna try it. Okay, another thing is put stickers on paper. So um, my mother-in-law gives the kids stickers on a lot of birthdays and holidays and we, you can buy stickers at the Dollar Tree or Hobby Lobby and just let your little ones stick stickers on paper. That's the newest thing that we're doing in the car is I hand them stickers and they stick it on their hands and on the paper. I teach them not to stick stickers anywhere else. Stickers can only be stuck on paper. I don't let them stick them on their clothes either because if we forget to take them off and you send them through the washer, then it can easily leave like a sticky spot on their clothes and that's really hard to get off. So I don't recommend that um, if they are gonna stick the stickers on their clothes and not only on the paper. Okay, this is a super easy one, Legos. You can get like an ice cream bucket and put a small amount of Legos in it, dump it out on the floor for them or inside a cookie sheet and let them play Legos, let them build them together, let them separate them into colors, etc. cetera. Um, I don't know what these things are called. I'm not sure what these things are called, but they, they stick together and they used, there used to be a hundred of them. I think I bought them for counting or maybe place value. I'm not sure, but my four year old builds swords with these while we're sitting and doing school. And also if I want him to play with them for longer after he gets bored of building, I tell him to pull every single one of them apart and put them in piles of all the same colors. And he can do that. Um, and that takes him about 10 minutes. So that gives me about 10 minutes of uninterrupted time for him to pull these apart and put them in colored piles. It's actually one of my most go-to things when I really need him to sit and be occupied. Okay, another thing is puzzles. Now I have eight children and I can say some children love puzzles and some do not. I have one child that loves puzzles and if I say do puzzles, he would get really excited. I have one children that one child that can do puzzles really well but doesn't really love doing so. So if I say, okay, let's do some puzzles for a while, she'll be like, okay. And then I have a couple of other older ones that they'll do puzzles, they won't do puzzles, whatever, but um, puzzles are a really good thing, especially for like the four to seven age range. Um, you can get those big floor puzzles, you can get the smaller like 25 piece puzzles at Dollar Tree, the 50 piece puzzles at Dollar Tree. Um, even my eight and nine year old can do the 100 piece puzzles. If I need to cook dinner and I'm overstimulated that day, things are loud and crazy and I really need 
everybody to just be quiet. Maybe it's raining outside. I don't want to turn the TV on. Puzzles are a really good idea at that point. Okay, this one's gonna sound silly, but it works, and that's just to color. Give your kids a piece of paper, a few crayons or markers, and let them color. Now, I believe that coloring takes a little bit of training, teaching them not to color on the table, not to color on their high chair, not to color on their body. Still working on that with my two-year-old because if I give her markers, she's gonna try to eat them, she's gonna color on her arm. When I first gave her crayons, she would peel the paper off and break them into tiny pieces. But over time, you train them on how to use it, teach them what's right and wrong, and that way they get better and better, and then they can really bring out their artisticness by letting them color. Um, all those things, you can even give them coloring books and let them flip through and color pages. I like to rip out the pages that they're gonna color instead of giving them a whole book because then they color a little bit on each page and then flip it and color a little bit. But if you tear the page out and give it to them, they're more likely to color the whole page. And I even tell my kids when they bring me pictures that has just like a little bit on each page, I'll say, oh my goodness, I love it, it's so beautiful. Go put more on that page, fill up the whole page. And that way they learn not to, you know, just write a few scribbles on a page um, and give it to me as a gift. They will color the whole page. Not always do I tell them that, especially if it's like a small picture, but if they're just in the scribbling stage, I'll have them fill in as much of the page as they will before moving on to another page. Okay, dot markers. Um, I had never even heard of dot markers until maybe a year ago. My one of my children got it as a birthday gift and my little um, one and three year old, they were one and three when we first got them, they love those dot markers. They will dot color for hours. I mean, okay, maybe not hours, but a long time. So it definitely switches things up from your standard coloring. I switch back and forth between the dot markers, regular markers, and crayon. But dot markers are a hit especially if you get the coloring books that have the little dots all over them so they can fill in the dots. I ran out of those um, and now I just give them paper to dot, but they still dot pictures like crazy. So highly recommend dot markers. Highly, highly, highly recommend dot markers. Okay, another thing is to get a muffin tin and give your children the little colored pom-poms from Dollar Tree and have them sort the pom-poms into the muffin tin. That's a really cool idea. You can, the younger ones, you can just put them in a bowl and say, put one pom-pom in each muffin tin, or you can say, put all the red pom-poms in one, all the green pom-poms in one. I know you can get different colored pom-poms at different holidays. Right now, it's St. Patrick's Day, you could probably get green ones. Valentine's Day was like pink, red, white. Christmas would have been red and green. And then they have your standard like circus colored pom-poms at Dollar Tree that are really cool. I know they have in the craft section at Hobby Lobby. So those are really cool. Just make sure that if your little one puts those in your mouth, don't do that because those could be choking hazards for sure. Okay, so um, split pea sensory bin. So I had a lot of split peas at one time and my children just didn't like to eat them. So I thought, what am I gonna do with these split peas? And since I've since learned to how to cook them better, but at this time in my life, I made this sensory bin. I dumped in some bags of um, green split peas and inside it, I had paper clips, erasers, I had Hot Wheels cards, like all kinds of tiny little screws, anything that was little that I could kind of hide in there. I'd hide like 20 things in like a, I don't know, like a giant bin, clear Tupperware. And I would set it down in front, uh, in front of my one-year-old or my three-year-old and I would say, okay, find everything in there that's not a split pea. And they would. Now, when they first started doing this, they would get split peas all over the floor and I would just sweep them up and throw them away because there were millions of them, so you didn't miss a few. But over time, they got neater and neater at it. A lot of times when you first introduce something to a kid, they make a mess with it and you have to teach them how to um, do it properly without getting split peas all over the floor or you could help have them help you clean up the split peas off the floor and that way they don't want to get them on the floor if they have to clean them up themselves. But that was a really, really fun thing. Um, I literally had a cabinet full of like all these random things so that I can pull them out while I'm homeschooling. I bounce through these different things all the time and try to keep things fresh and new and that way they never get bored. All right. 
So another thing that you can do is get a Tupperware and put a little bit of water in the bottom and let your children give their Legos or their Hot Wheel cars a bath. So you could give them like a tiny little rag and they can scrub the Legos or the um, Hot Wheels, give them a little bath and then a towel beside them for them to put them on when they get done. This is another thing that can be messy, but it doesn't have to be. So try it out, see if it's worth your time. And this would be especially good if they were like sitting at your table while you're trying to cook dinner or something like that. Maybe you could set the whole thing on a bigger towel. Maybe you could set them on the floor beside you. And that way if they do spill the water, it's really not that big of a deal because it's just water. You already have a towel down there. They can wipe it up and it gives you a few minutes to do what you need to do. All right, this is a really cool thing that I've been letting my four year old do lately is I give them like four pieces of white printer paper. I tape them together or I let him help me tape it together. And then he draws um, lines on the paper or he draws like a little road on the paper and he drives his Hot Wheel cars on the paper. Now this doesn't always keep him occupied for a really long time, but if he's always so proud of that road or whatever it is that he draws on that paper for his Hot Wheel car to drive on. So I've always thought that was a really um, neat Thing for them once I came up with that or maybe I read it somewhere I'm not sure I've been compiling this list for months so I can't remember everywhere exactly that I've read I wish I could remember where I read about driving the cars through shaving cream because I'd really like to give them credit for that but I do not remember where I read that one day um, because that definitely read that on a mom blog somewhere if you came up with that idea or know who did let me know so that I can put it down in the comments below so I can send people to the um, blog where I read it so that I can so that they can get more information on how that works. I just thought it was such a cute idea and I still haven't bought shaving cream but I only go to the Dollar Tree about every two to three months pretty much when we run out of hair ties. I always go there for hair ties and whatever else um, usually at birthdays and stuff like that but other than that I try to stay out of Dollar Tree because I could easily spend like 40 bucks in there on random things like pom-poms and shaving cream. I have a list. Anyway, um, let's see. I feel like I skipped something. about 20 bucks on Amazon, but I really, really like it. This was really great for my five-year-old, the one that loved puzzles. He's a very hands-on learner and he is very hands-on at everything. So this really works well for him. This is full of all kinds of ideas on things to build. It has these little pegs in it and it has lots of little screws and all these little flat pieces that you can build stuff with. It comes with instructions. And you can do all that fancy stuff, but my favorite thing to have my five-year-old do was he would take this and it has a screwdriver and he would screw in screws all the way down forever. It would keep him occupied for quite a while and then you can even give the little ones these little pegs to push in. My um, three-year-old would do that really well. I would just take all the pegs out and I would put them in a bowl and I'd hand them to him and he would just push them all in or I could say, you know, take them out, take all the pegs out of here. Um, and so that was a really neat thing for them to do. If you have an extra 20 bucks, I think that these are called STEM activities. I'll try to find them and link them below to try to make it a little bit more helpful for you guys. I do not have like an Amazon affiliate account yet, but I'm working on that. So hopefully I will have that with long. This is a really good investment. I bought this. When I first started homeschooling my fifth child because my other two toddlers were having a really hard time with their brother not being able to play with them and so they were definitely making homeschooling a kindergartner extra difficult if homeschooling a kindergartner is not already difficult enough. Um, then you have a, a 
three-year-old and a one-year-old who want to be with you and their big brother to learn too and things just don't work out well that way so I had to find activities for them and I ended up finding lots of activities for my kindergartner that was a very hands-on learner in the first place so anyway so those are some ideas for how to keep your toddlers busy while you need to get anything done. I hope this video was helpful for you. I hope that you found a couple of ideas that might interest you or that you might like to do that are doable. I do not feel like each one of these is a good fit for everyone, but I do feel like some of these are a good fit for someone. So anyway, I hope you enjoyed this video. Be sure to share it with other moms who might um, benefit from hearing a few ideas, some new ideas on what to do to keep their toddlers busy. And we will see you guys in the next one. Hi, my name is Morgan Monday and I am making a video today that I've been thinking about for months. I am a mom of eight children and I homeschool all of them. I've always homeschooled ever since my oldest has been in kindergarten. She's in 10th grade now and I have an eighth grader a third grader, a second grader, and a kindergartner. Um, I also have a just turned four year old and two year old that really make homeschooling challenging some days. Those toddlers can really make anything challenging some days. Cooking, dinner, cleaning, laundry, sleeping. Um, so I have been coming up with a list of things that you can do with your toddler or that they can do independently so that you can get 10 to 15 minutes of free time. Whether you need to teach a homeschooling lesson, cook dinner, clean up, you know, um, just sit down for a few minutes and do nothing, whatever it is that you need, here's a few ideas to help you get a few minutes of free time. Here we go.